How's it going people, Jack here with another video here to check out some more from the Casual Geographic channel on animals that are willing to risk it all. At least, that is what I'm going to presume with the title Generational Crash Out. And for that, I would believe on good faith that there will in the least be mention of both elephants and eagles. Because elephants for one are extremely... <laughs> They are wild as animals, as um, I was reading a story to my daughter the other day on how it is that elephants are willing to travel extremely long distances to find a family. They for one have a hearing range of like four kilometers or even more given ideal circumstances. And of course the mothers who tend to lead the herd and show them like all the different uh, paths that they would have taken have that incredible memory of course and could trace the path back to the herd. So that's one thing. And of course, there are the males for when. <sighs> He'll talk about that eventually. But of course, with eagles, uh, depending on the sort of eagles that we're talking about, they can do some pretty wild shit as well. So without further ado, let's give this a look. Oh, the tiger video. <laughs> Bully brawl. <gasps> Crash out. Here's the definition, and here's the definition, but in picture. And Hold on. Urban Jack's dictionary. What Crash say? out. Here's the definition. Someone who's constantly on the verge of losing their sh oh, and is ready to throw everything away at a moment's notice. Well, risk it all. Close. <laughs> and here's the definition, but in picture. And if it's not clear now, it will be by the end of this video. Crash outs exist in all walks of life, you know what no. they say. Where there's a will, there's a way for a Chris to get rocked by a fresh prince flick of the wrist. But today, we're gonna talk about the biggest crash outs in nature, and there's a lot to choose from, so some had to get left off. I won't be talking about hippos, honey badgers, or pig buffalo. I've said my piece on this roid raging demon. hydro horse on steroids. We already know Africa's black death is a hunter's nightmare for humans and lions alike, and I have an entire video on this biracial black Air Force hate mongering Hufflepuff. <laughs> Remember the honey badger? A meme that I made of that uh, during one of the uh, previous videos, imagining the menace that I can become. But what I will talk about are rhinos. As I've said that rhinos are legally blind, terminally traumatized anxiety tanks that'll buck up to anything from a butterfly to a buffalo. Except I was wrong. Recent studies show that the eyesight of rhinos might not even be that bad. It's oh. just their attitude. Which means that rhino fully punted a warthog purposely and unprovoked. While I thought that rhinos, because of their eyes being on the side, meant that they kind of saw things a bit more blurry. Because they have great sense of hearing and smell. So because they couldn't detect things as uh, being a threat or not, they would just either attack things as they saw them coming, or just don't engage in them at all because they can't distinguish. While well, this one proceeded in assault on eight wheels and still went for a literal headshot. There's a reason why a group of rhinos is an honest to God crash, but they're not even the biggest crash outs in Africa. That would be elephants. <laughs> But yeah, like literally, they're the biggest. Whoever made this up actively <laughs> helped escort people off the census. Which they don't need help doing since elephants flatlined over 600 people last year. But it isn't until elephants hit must that they really become crash out oh, kings. Yeah. Must is when a sudden burst of hormones turns elephants into 12,000 pound drunk lusting frat boys. The word must even comes from the word intoxicated and a down bad bull's testosterone levels can spike 60 times higher than normal. And that's where the crash out comes in. No animal is safe from an entitled elephant that can't handle rejection. Not even baby elephants. Eating a toddler because his mom won't relieve you? Crash out. But the real degeneracy didn't show itself until humans got involved. Yeah, it's, it's that kind of story. Poaching is evil, we all know it, and it's often the older, more mature bulls that get hit the hardest, for obvious reasons. Oh, man. What wasn't expected was removing elephant OGs from the population meant that the younger, immature, teenage bulls and must got even more out of oh, pocket. Oh, shit. And what do you get when you have unruly six-ton six pests with no father figure to keep them in line? I didn't think about it that way at all. Yeah, obviously, when the dads are no longer there to tell them, hey, kid, listen. Much happens once in a while, so you need to control yourself. <laughs> they partook a wild. Mm, well, if I know. Oh. There was a period in the 90s where three young bulls that Holy Jesus. What is that? What? 
fucked up. Do you remember the whole thing about rhinos not being able to distinguish whether or not something is a threat? Well, <laughs> the more you know. Got rejected by their own kind, resorting to violating and killing not one, not two, not ten, but 63 rhinos. Fatherless behavior for an elephant apparently means turning a rhino from a tight end to a whiteout, and it wasn't until the season more mature bulls were brought back in that the rhino ravaging eventually stopped. And it's not just males that can choose violence. We can't forget that time an elephant traveled across India just to life deprive a 70 year old senior citizen while she was getting water. For context, that elephant escaped from the Dalma Wildlife Sanctuary and traveled over 100 miles to the Rapai village in Odisha. Being homicidal for over 100 miles straight is already menace behavior. What solidified and it was that same herd pulling up to that woman's funeral later that day and paying everything but respects. And that same elephant grabbed her soul evacuated 0 HP body and proceeded to put her in the negatives. Basically, she got put on a shirt except the shirt was reversible. And after desecrating her corpse, dessert was destroying the woman's house along with several others. <laughs> Time to bring back... Time to bring back the Oprah meme. So how do you feel? How did that make you feel? Oh my god, that is so evil. And you know the elephant remembers it. They're not dumb, okay? That is just vitriol on an animalistic level. Now many have said the woman Maya Murmu had it coming and was involved in poaching and this was a case of an elephant not forgetting or forgiving. It also could have been someone's grandmother getting murked twice and memed on Twitter all because of RNG. We'll never know the why, but what we do <laughs> yes! know is my favorite animal is capable of crash outs of catastrophic proportions. And now we got the smallest crash out in the world. When a colony of Calabos oh, and Sonder Sea Ants gets attacked, some of the soldiers will rupture two huge poison-filled glands and literally blow themselves up. They don't just seppuku themselves, they also rain a toxic corrosive glue that either traps the op ants in place or just burns them alive. It's self-sacrificing altruistic behavior meant to defend the colony, but that is one hell of an escalation. One species of termite also has a concept of kamikaze themselves, and they have toxic glands that actually grow as they get older. That means the same old worker termites with dull mandibles that can't fight or forge as well as their juniors also carry the most potent explosive backpacks in the colony. So their last act of service involves eviscerating themselves in a Rain of internal organs, intestines, and toxins, which proves that the most dangerous crash out is the one with nothing left to lose. For reference, that's like breaking into a house and the last thing you see is a senile 90 year old rushing you with a bomb strapped to their chest. But the wildest crash out might be. That movie is fucking great. Watch it. I believe it's called Don't Breathe, right? Uh, it's, it's, been a, it's been a moment. Uh, Don't Breathe 1 or 2. Regardless of one, I, I, I'll put something there in the edit. It's very good. Be what P aphids do once a predator breaks into their home. Because not only will soldiers come together and turn themselves into fleshy fireworks, they'll use their own bodily fluids to plug up the opening. Even if it means they get left outside in past tense. Even if it means they suffocate on their own insides. And even if the process senses subtracts them instantly. It's what? one thing to self destruct the back pedal of predator, or even after already being eaten, which aphids actually do. Using flex seal made out of your own guts for home repair is exactly the type of behavior this video is about. But if elephants violating the natural order didn't already tell you the worst crash outs are the ones humans created and this black air force b is the result of one of the biggest oopsies in human history there we go again blaming the africanized bees <laughs> that's one of the greatest bits that i've ever heard in comedy I, I can't remember exactly from whom i heard that from but there was like this uh comedy bit on how it was that the, the africanized bee is way more violent than the european bees <laughs> Like, come on, man, you're making it sound like a Fox News report. But yeah, speaking of oopsies, this truly was one of the oopsies of all times. Back in the 50s, African bees were brought to Brazil and crossbred with their more domesticated European cousins. The idea was, if they could combine the two, they could create a bee that was more efficient than the Europeans in tropical climates while also being less defensive than the African counterparts. But in one of the most consequential f**k-ups possible, a local beekeeper accidentally released 26 swarms of Africanized bees, including queens. But experts said not to worry, that the bees would either die out in the foreign climate or get bred out of existence by the already present European bees. Ooh. Wait, tw how do you accidentally release 26? How? Like, if I heard this story before that they did release some colonies, but, but that they literally were backup bees. Wasn't it the case that the queens, some of the queens died during the airport check? How the f 
26? Oh, he's so incompetent. Yes, but actually no. By the 60s, they made it across the country. By the 80s, they hit Mexico. By the 90s, they were popping up in the US. And today, the Africanized assault has spread throughout America like a rageaholic rash. And here's the thing with playing God with bees. You better be prepared for hell. These Africanized bees were way meaner than anything this side of the Atlantic had ever seen. They were way more aggressive, much less forgiving, and the same honey merchants that were enough to legitimately punk elephants, that's not a joke by the way, were doing numbers on unsuspecting people. You see, where European bees might send 10 to 20 guard bees after you, the Africanized flying mob will pull up in the hundreds. And where European bees might chase you for uh, a couple feet, the African variety will chase trespassers for a quarter of a mile, assuming you even get that far. The irony is, African bees have smaller hives, that means these gang flies weaponize a higher percentage of their hive just to go after you. Add the fact that the very smell of bee venom is like a Batman signal to the rest of the hive, and you realize just how badly that one beekeeper screwed us over. Dang. Speaking of venom, you probably know that honeybees die after yeah, stings, yeah, 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 yeah. the stingers are barbed and attached to their abdomen, causing attacking bees to literally disembowel themselves. What you might not know is that stinger will continue pumping venom into you long after the bee has become a was. Now that's yeah, just so remove it. That's how you get stories of people being chased by vindictive swarms. Oh, and by the way, it's proven if you try to duck the fate by jumping in the water, they will wait. wait, sometimes with fatal consequences. In 2013, a Texas man died after being stung over 1,000 times, and the bee still had enough malice left over to leave his wife and daughter with 100 apiece. It says a lot that the dietary habits of the crash out mascot might have helped create one of the most infamous crash crowds in the air. But not all crash outs are fueled by hate. Some are powered by love. Courting bald eagles hey. with interlocked talons and plummet down towards yep. the earth only to separate at the last possible yep. second. Because apparently feathery foreplay means death spiraling in a questionable game of chicken. Apparently, it's to test each other's fitness as a possible partner. You know, separate the strong from the strongest. Except it does the opposite when the <laughs> I made mean, this analogy to my partner. I was like, hey, so uh, you're willing to be an eagle? <laughs> didn't get it. <laughs> Tangled avians crash land into trees, water, or sometimes straight pavement and take each other out the dating pool. It was like to the equivalents of the stupid sayings that always come like, would you still love me if I was a worm? Like, okay, fine. Are you willing to be an eagle? <laughs> And bald eagles mate for life, so where do you even go after your vow renewal turns into a wake that only one of you is conscious for? A study showed that eagles will also death spiral with rivals, so it's really a case of either f me or fight me or just don't waste my time. But that makes even less sense, because at least with a mate, the logic is you're trying to find the strongest, most eligible single to spend the rest of your life with. Mm -hmm. Ending death a two for one BOGO deal because you had beef and literally couldn't let it go is the definition of crashing out. At least when it happens with deer like moose, you know it's really bad luck. But voluntarily oh. interlocking toes just to die with someone you you claim to hate like what's really going on here but that relationship's nowhere near as toxic as the house sparrows it's like tweety listen to nba young boy it's a honey badger with wings and an op to every other bird but especially their own kind okay so the crashing out is caused by the fact that house sparrows are monogamous and mate for life there are also serial cheating air strumpets and 15 percent of sparrow children born aren't even related to the male raising them cheating isn't a foreign concept to birds thoughts and prayers out to the penguin that got dogged yeah, yeah, out yeah. got his cloaca no. kicked by his wife's boyfriend begged for her back got beat again only to get rejected and bust his ass a third time yeah no way he goes out that sad male sparrows that suspect their partner of cheating get their revenge by purposely feeding their children less bordering on starvation the thing is he has no way of knowing which chick's actually his. He only goes by how much time the mother spends away from the nest. Basically, imagine your dad stars you within an inch of your life, all because your mom spent the equivalent of 10 extra minutes at the grocery store. <laughs> but female sparrows ain't sweet either. The difference is she cheats with better genetic quality or you could say high value males, while the male cheats to spread his seed as far as physically possible. Except that the female catches on to the cheating, she responds by slaughtering his entire family. Children well, that's true human behavior, right? <laughs> that's literally it. Like, you know the way that men tend to respond to cheating? That's that's that, right? The, the, the bee is slightly vindictive and uh, throw a tantrum and uh, do some kind of mean shit uh, when it comes to women. <laughs> I'm generalizing here, obviously. She will murder your entire family. Children and all. And it's scientifically proven that butchering the babies offers no advantage to the offending female. It's just pure love of the game. Cheating's never right, but when your get back gets children buried, you have lost the plot. Especially since the females most likely to commit baby cancellation are second wives. As in they got with him, oh, got with him due to cheating, God. only to wipe out the entire first family. Come also, on. I just thought about it. She also has no way of knowing which chicks are his. That means yes. she really just life retires any baby. Baby sparrow she comes across. Yeah, that's a crash out of the highest order. And right up there with them, 
has to be this frog. It's a culinary crash dummy off the fact that an Argentine horned frog would rather choke to death trying to swallow something physically bigger than they are than just give it up. Scientists have found expired frogs with their stomachs torn open out of pure stubbornness. It's a gluttonous breathing pot of greed card come to life. Not only that, they're truly terrible to put a greed. embarrassingly bad jumpers and yo, they don't even rib it. Fooled and sold every aspect of being a frog just to moonlight as Jabba the Gut. They can even develop amphibian corneal lipidosis where they hold on to oh. so much fat, they literally wow. accumulate fat deposits on their eyes that blind them. To be fair, it's usually from overfeeding in captivity, but my brother in Christ. Even the Kado Avocado put the fork down at some point. <laughs> Yo! Like you have people being blinded by like cataracts, glycoma, and uh, the diabetic, um, uh, what's his name? Diabetic retinopathy, right? Uh, this, this thing just eats itself. <laughs> to the fat deposits form in front of the eyes and makes them cloudy and unable to see. Yikes. Jabba the gut for sure. Thumbnail. Thumbnail right there. Especially since frogs can't vomit, the best this kitchen crash out can do is fully eject their stomachs. But luckily, they're not a threat to you. Next is a crash out that the majority of the American audience has to sidestep on a daily basis. Which is funny, because the Canada goose nearly got put in an eternal milk carton due to overhunting and habitat loss. This, this video is getting cursed by the second. In fact, we fully thought they were out of stock in the 50s, until a small flock was found in Rochester, Minnesota. Yep. And with the help of the Migratory Bird Treaty Act in the US and the Migratory Birds Convention Act in Canada, along with conservation efforts, the Canada Goose was able to make a comeback. And humanity and geese lived happily ever. No. Absolutely not. Yet yeah, a cobra chicken came back with a vengeance. I called the sparrow an airborne honey badger. Nah, nah, nah. It's this barcoded assault with wings. Easily the most undeserved arrogance I've ever seen on an animal. And that's really what it is. This damn velociraptor has some wildly irrational confidence. They're like Family Guy. They nearly got cancelled, came back, and by God do they not miss a chance to punish us. I want the sequel to the video game Untitled Goose to be made about these guys. That you get out there, instead of punking humans, you punk zoo animals. For it. Even Sully's heroic landing in the Hudson wouldn't have even been needed if a goose didn't try to run a fade with a plane. Just proof that you can get a <laughs> lot of mileage out of false, unearned valor. Because it's a bluff. Geese nest on the ground, so they only really can respond to a threat to minor safety by implementing the honey badger method. By raising hell until you meet someone that takes you there. Add the fact that they've managed to lose their fear of humans and you have a honk happy threat to national security. I've even read reports of them apparently luring chasing dogs into Mother took down the special forces. <laughs> Honk honk, motherfuckers. <laughs> no. Wait. Dude was trying to do a roundhouse kick, Chuck Norris style. <laughs> raising hell until you meet someone that takes you there. Add the fact that they've managed to lose their fear of humans and you have a honk happy threat to national security. I've even read reports of them apparently luring chasing dogs into deep water just to attack and harass them until they eventually drown in exhaustion. <laughs> to be fair, you could just lease your dog. Oh, also, goose tongue. Oh, yeah, they they don't. Of bluff, and they read body language, so act like you've been around a goose before and you'll probably be fine. So why are geese so mean? Eh, they'd probably be dead if they weren't. But at least they're not capable of really damaging anything but your pride. Complete opposite of chimpanzees, my word. Probably a top three crash out in nature, cuz you really never know what could set this chainsaw with thumbs off. Change your hairstyle for the first time in 10 years? Yeah, you just lost your face privileges. Push one of your troop mates a little too far? Call it Kaizen the way you about to get jujutsu jumped. Do a f***ing barrel roll? Absolutely not. Not in these parts. Chimps and really primates in general have a sense of fairness. Do something they view as unfair? Oh buddy, you finna find out why they're the prime ministers of unproportional reactions. Yep, that's, uh, they tend to be my go-to when it comes to the whole discussion of how informing systems of morality, there are some animals that have this way understanding of uh, fairness from where from we can then start to derive moral value, so to speak. But yeah, the Jujutsu Kaisen kind of jumping method there is almost no it's actually worse than jojo's jumping so yeah <laughs> the shims are known for that this man decided to surprise his former pet chimp with a chocolate cake for his birthday 
The real surprise was two male chimps getting out and mutilating the man for not serving them a slice first. I'm not gonna list the full extent of his injuries, I have a full video doing that. Just know, Fuck. the first two hospitals denied him entry because they literally thought he was a lost cause. Monkeys in oh. captivity have also been known to mob a member of their own for receiving more food than the others. And when I was eight, a chimp temper tantrum nearly had me halfway to Helen Keller. Almost had me rocking the Nick Fury fit. Now we cannot forget that time monkeys in India went on a campaign of dropping dogs from roofs after one allegedly attacked a baby of their own. Yeah, primates are some Hall of Fame crash outs. Question is, what could possibly be more destructive? Well... Oh yeah. Tigers are easily one of the most vengeful creatures alive, and the moment this striped population control wants you dead, you might as well lease a casket. Leave the cubs alone. I've heard stories upon stories of relocation of tigers when <clears throat> perhaps well-meaning individuals who want to protect villages or whatever forget that mom is just around the corner. There's plenty of stories of tigers going from zero to a thousand. In 2007, three teenagers that may or may not have been under the influence taunted 243 pound Tatiana the tiger, reportedly even pelting her with pine cones from a slingshot. Tati cleared a 12 foot mo, severely mauled two of the teens, and killed the third. In 2016, a tiger ripped apart an infamous poacher named Baby only four days after his group reportedly shot his mate. In 97, a hunter named Vladimir Markov not only shot a tiger, but had the audacity to steal his kill. As a result, the whisker John Wick stalked his cabin, tore anything that smelled like him to shreds including his mattress and bedding, and apparently even demolished an outhouse Markov had used. As you can guess, the story ended around the same time Vladdy did, once a Siberian assassin was there to greet him at his house. And then there's this. The backstory is that a mother tiger and her cubs had ventured beyond the boundaries of a park and had injured cattle in the process, so rangers went out to capture and relocate the trio. They successfully tranked and removed the cubs, but the mother was nowhere to be found. That was until about that, right there here. It is. The enraged mother cleared a full-grown elephant and managed to mutilate the mahout riding it, taking several fingers with her and a fury on four legs was never seen again. But the most infamous big cat crash out came in the early 1900s. When a tiger dubbed the man-eater at Jumpawat killed, 436 people, giving her the highest human body count of any single animal. Shit. And it was discovered that the cause was a cripplingly debilitating tooth injury that forced her to go after easier prey. And that's the thing I do want to mention. I know I had fun with the crash out concept, but really all the tiger was ever guilty of doing was what came naturally. And that really goes for every animal on this list. Tatiana wouldn't have had to die and take someone's son with her if they hadn't gone and tested her killer. Travis was an overweight, socially stunted, Xanax-consuming time bomb that some woman decided to keep inside as a pet. Even the whole Elephino mess started with poachers destroying and fragmenting their families and probably giving the pachyderms PTSD. Like, I'll joke around and stuff for comedic effect, but I'm not actually out here judging animals by human standards. Hey. He said something real before he got Chris rocked and left with fresh prints. Talk about the tiger went crazy. That tiger ain't go crazy. That tiger went tiger. But yeah, that's gonna do it for this video. Make sure you drink water, hug your mother. There's no church in the wild and no judge in the jungle, so don't expect animals to follow either. And I'ma see y'all in the next one. You best not attack my human. Oh. Oh, what a good, what a good gal. That, that tiger shot there hiding in the bushes will remain a haunting sight. It is literally invisible until it decides to clear the distance from between it and the elephant. Man, <laughs> nature is scary. So yeah, just uh, leave animals alone when they don't bother you. Uh, of course, I understand the whole thing about relocating because they cleared uh, the park that they were in, the boundaries of it. But make sure that mommy is also with the cubs. These are not domesticated animals. They do truly care for their young and yeah. Uh, just be careful of that. But guys, thank you so much for checking out these videos. Of course, if you want more uh, scientific facts and even some more fun stuff on animals, please do make sure to go and subscribe to Casual Geographic. And of course, if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button. And I see you guys in the next one. Bye.
back at the riding around in a coupe.